Hey everyone, this is an alcohol-free life channel. We're learning to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. My name is Terry G and let's get to the video. What today's video is about, well, it's about this. It's about sex, love, in sobriety. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. The reason I wanna talk about this is because not a lot of people talk about sex and sobriety, but sex and sobriety relationships or getting together with somebody in early sobriety caused me major major setbacks in my sobriety and i was unable to make rash decisions during these situations i'm telling you it was crazy in those days you know getting involved with somebody oh man oh man there's one thing it does though it really helps you work your steps if you're in a dysfunctional relationship and you want to stay sober you're going to work you're going to work your steps like crazy believe me believe me the reason i want to talk about it is because in early sobriety like the first you know i say two years now i say two days to about five years i made crazy decisions when it came to partners i thought in early sobriety that you know that chemistry that we feel when we see somebody we're attracted to I mistake that for love. And I know you have to be attracted to people in order to be involved with them. You can't go out with somebody you're not attracted to. Really, you can't. I, I understand that. But I used to think that if you're sexually attracted to somebody and you had that chemistry going on, that that was love. And I, and I believe that. In early sobriety, I was very lonely, very needy, but most of all, when I quit drinking, my sexual drive exploded, to say the least. It exploded. I'm telling you, it was unreal. I never had sex with anybody sober for 28 years. Well, I, shouldn't, I didn't have sex when I was a teenager, but I got my, broke my virginity late in my teens. But all my drinking time, I only had sex when I was drunk or stoned a little bit. And when I came into sobriety, when I came into, into recovery, I tell you, man, I was so revved up. I was so horny, it was crazy. And I was so lonely and needy. And anyone that paid attention to me, I would gravitate to. And if that person who I gravitated to, I felt that they were attractive and I felt that chemistry, you know, that giddiness and all that sort of stuff. I thought that was love. And then we started to have sex. And as the more sex we had together, it was great sex, it was always great sex. I thought that was love. That once you sleep with somebody for a long period of time, that was love and that is what those relationships are all about. Not all about, but it's a really binding sort of act, isn't it? It's a really binding sort of act. But I'm gonna tell you something, be careful. Be very, very careful what I just described. Just because you have sex with somebody doesn't mean you're in a relationship. You're in a relationship when you say you are. And this person I was gravitated to, I had two children with, and I couldn't even lead my own life. I was so addicted to sex with this person, and I thought she was so pretty, you know, so gorgeous. I just thought that was love. I know that sounds crazy, but I did. I was very immature and all that kind of stuff. And being lonely like I was and being needy like I was, I would have taken anybody. I had two children with that person. And let me tell you something, it wasn't good. That was a major, major mistake on my behalf. We did not get along. We had two wonderful children that I don't regret having to this day, but the battles with her were astronomical. They were off the chart. And the simple reason, sex, and that chemistry did not, not add up to a good relationship. It didn't add up to a good relationship. So that one failed dramatically. The second one I had was basically the same. I was needy, I was lonely, I felt no one wanted me, and I found her very attractive, and I was horny like crazy over her, and we had sex, it was great, and that sex, turned into some sort of a relationship. I ended up getting married 
to this person. It wasn't all total, it wasn't all bad, but again, I made a wrong decision. I moved in with her three weeks after I met her. The first one I met, I moved in with her six weeks. And the reason I moved in with them, my decision was, I can't afford my rent. I'm having a hard time paying the bills. I'll just move in with them. That was my decision. It wasn't based on that I wanted to be with them. It was based on a need that I needed to be satisfied. And that was financial insecurity. So we had sex and I, you know, things were great. And they really were at the start with the second one, but they turned out to be garbage. It really did. This chemistry reaction that we have and people talk about that a lot when they're dating it failed me it really did i know we have to be attracted to the individual but it failed me it really really did and that's all i want to say about that i could get into more details but both of those relationships fell apart and they fell apart hard and basically it was i was making all the right decisions for all the wrong reasons i really was they were not compatible with me. But I thought if I had sex and the sex life was great and we're, we had chemical, like a chemistry reaction, like, wow, well, you're hot, you're gorgeous. I thought that's what it was. So for myself, the sex and the love and early sobriety, I didn't know nothing about. I didn't. I was very immature. I was looking for things that in other people that would satisfy the void that I had in myself. I really did. And that's why it's really important to stay by yourself and start to learn about yourself for you'll know your needs and your wants. And when you make decisions that are big ones, like relationships, moving in with somebody, you'll make it correctly or at least you'll have a, you know, a sensible opinion of what is going on, a logical, and you'll be able to make a logical decision. And that's really important. The thing that I suggest you do, and you can, you can do what you want because I know in sobriety they say, stay away from relationships at least for one year. I don't know too many people who've done that, but I know some people, but very, very rare. And I've been kicking around program for many, many years. Just go out and date them for a while. Date them, go and date them. Don't look for a mate, just go and date, take them out. Try not to have sex with them. I don't care how attracted you are to them. Just wait, just wait and see if you're compatible with them. It's, it's slower, it's more impatient. It, it's not gratifying, you know, a quick gratification like sex and orgasms have, but at least you can make a decision because after that, if you get along great, you can have all the sex you want, but your relationship will be based on that you know, and she knows, or he knows, or whoever knows, that is based on that you can get along with each other, that you have something in common. Don't make the mistakes that I did. Slow down and take your time. Slow down and take your time because getting in a relationship can have catastrophic effects on your sobriety, your financial life, your, your emotional life, your psyche life, your moods, your body, everything. Let me tell you, I went berserk. I had a hell of a time with these relationships. I had a hell of a time. I was depressed, anxious. They were so dysfunctional. It was unbelievable. But you know something? I made the choice to get involved with these people. I made the choice. We were not compatible whatsoever. But now I'm more mature. I understand who I am. And I took my time more. I just said, no. I'm not going to have sex with these people this, when I meet them. You know, I met them off uh, uh, dating sites, which I think is a great idea. And I'm going to talk to them, take them out for dinner, do a few things and just see how they are. Are we compatible? Is this person a psycho or does she think I'm a psycho? Are we going to be able to get along? Like I don't drink or smoke dope or smoke cigarettes. Is this person going to be all right with that? Am I gonna be all right with her? Does she smoke or drink or smoke dope? Am I gonna be all right with that? So keep your clothes on, keep your dink in your pants, and you women, keep your clothes on too. It's just not the guys I'm talking about. And give yourself some time. Give yourself some time to know yourself, know what you want, and to make a very good educated decision about who 
and when you want to get involved with somebody. And I tell you, your relationships will improve. They really will. And it starts off with just being by yourself for a while and testing the waters one date at a time, okay? I hope you enjoy this video. This video I want to make for a little while because sex and love, supposed to be love and chemistry and all that stuff in sobriety got me in a lot of trouble, man. Like, I could go on for another hour and a half about the problems that I had. But I tell you, I made it through it. I made my amends, my restitution, child support, and all that kind of stuff. And now life is pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. It really is. Okay. Thanks a lot for stopping by. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol free life channel where we're going to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? Can you take another second and hit that like button? I really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks again. Remember, stay safe, stay sober, and there's no I in team. We need each other to stay sober, to get recovery. We really do. We need that support. Family, friends, wherever it comes from, we need that positive support to help us in our recovery. And we can give that support back to others, okay? God bless. Ciao for now. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.